G'day everyone, welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, I wanna show you guys how you can solve your foot muscle cramping with nothing but a ball. And that may sound a little bit strange considering what the, the general understanding of what foot muscle cramping is and what causes it. But hopefully towards the end of the video, or by the end of the video, you'll have a really clear understanding about what the hidden cause of foot muscle cramps are and what you can do to make sure that they never come back again. And this is really important for people that have foot muscle cramps a lot whether you have them with something consistent or whether they just come on randomly. We want to give you the tools to make sure that you understand what causes them so that you don't have to have them anymore. You can be free of them for good. And as always, if you do want to enjoy this video, please consider leaving a like below. If you know someone who might benefit from this video, someone who maybe suffers from foot cramps as well, then please consider sharing this to them so that they can see it. And if you enjoyed this kind of content that we put out where we're sort of talking about the maybe the hidden underlying causes of a lot of common issues and some really simple and effective things that we find clinically really help to solve them. Um, please consider subscribing to the channel as well. You know, turn notifications on if you are interested, just so that you get these videos as they come out, just so you don't miss anything. And obviously it really helps the channel grow. It helps these ideas and these techniques um, reach more people, which ultimately is the main goal. So, so with that being said, <clears throat> when we talk about foot muscle cramping, um, we can't really delve into this idea without understanding the context about our current thinking about the cause of, of cramping, but specifically foot muscle cramps. And if anyone knows anything about cramping, um, particularly muscular cramping, um, there's, a, there's a couple of common uh, ideas and, and things that crop up a lot that we use to explain why that happens. And the common ones are things like dehydration, um, you know, electrolyte imbalances, fatigue, um, conditioning, all these sorts of things. But the the really interesting thing that I've sort of come to terms with with cramping is that a lot of these, um, a lot of these general ideas that we have at the moment that we try and focus on to prevent muscle cramps, they're very general and they're very broad. So for me, they don't necessarily explain why one specific part of your body, which in this case is the foot, why, let's just take it to your right foot that cramps a lot, why is one foot cramping? when if it was a dehydration problem, an electrolyte imbalance, if it was conditioning and um, whatever it may be, or fatigue, for example, why is it one foot and not both? And more importantly, if these sorts of things are more global things, you know, it's very unlikely that one part of your foot is dehydrated while the other foot isn't, or the rest of your leg isn't. Um, it's really unlikely that there's an electrolyte imbalance in one section of your body as opposed to a global imbalance, which you would expect. So. For a lot of time, I've had this sort of nagging question in the back of my head, this unanswered question of, well, what is it that makes one specific part of the body cramp in the absence of cramping everywhere else? And I know there are some people who cramp everywhere, but the idea that I want to go through here will apply to that. It does help explain why these things happen. And clinically, I'm finding really, really powerful results by focusing on one specific thing, which we'll get to in a second. <clears throat> and a lot of my patients who have had muscle cramps are turning into people who used to have muscle cramps just by focusing on this really simple um, thing. And when we get to it, you'll know it's not very sexy, it's not overly interesting, but it's really it's a it's a really strong underlying root cause that can explain why an, a specific part of your body is cramping, which again in this case is the foot, when everything else is relatively okay. Now, we can, as I said before, we can use a ball to solve this in my experience. So. The first thing we want to focus on basically is if you are having foot muscle cramps, clearly there's going to be a section of your foot that you are consistently struggling with. So again, that could be maybe the big toe, it can be the muscles under your foot, maybe of your arch. Um, they tend to be the main areas that people tend to cramp in. But again, if you found this video, it doesn't matter where you're cramping, where your foot cramps are, those foot muscle cramps are obviously specific to you. So one of the very simple symptomatic things that we can do um, is just using a ball, we can place the ball on the ground. I don't know if you can see this very well. Hopefully you can see this here. Um, and again, you can do this standing, but for the purposes of the video, you can do this sitting as well. Uh, ideally, the more pressure you put on this, the more effective it's gonna be. So what you can do a lot is just rub and roll the ball under the foot to free up these muscles. Now, again, I wanna stress that this is a symptomatic treatment, much in the way of stretching those foot muscles as well. Even if you're stretching your calf out as well, pulling your toes back, trying to stretch the muscles in the foot, this coupled with some ball work can be a really strong symptomatic way to free up those areas and hopefully sort of decrease the severity or the um, or how common those foot muscle cramps are. 
But again, they don't solve the root cause of why this particular foot or your specific part of the foot has become a problem when everything else is okay. Now, <clears throat> so again, if you frill that sort of stuff up, that's completely fine. But this next piece of information is crucial. So the single most important thing that I've found that relates to the cause of foot muscle cramping is lower back dysfunction. Now, again, that may sound strange to a lot of people because you may have some obvious foot muscle cramping or some foot pain or anything associated with that, but nothing overt going on in your back. And that's because we're not talking about low back pain. We're not, we're not even talking about low back muscular tightness. We're talking about overloaded, stiff and tight joints in the lower back. Now, these are really important because the, um, the anatomy of the spine suggests that when you have the spine down the middle and you've got a joint either side of that spine, where the, um, it allows the, the segments to sort of rotate and slide and glide around each other, which allows us to bend and flex our spine. Now, again, the nerves that supply the tissues in our legs come from the base of that spine. So we're looking at that L5, L4 section. It can be a little bit higher up depending on the person, but essentially the point I want to make here is there are a whole bunch of nerve uh, neural connections that start from the lower back that influence all the tissue in our legs. And if you have, for example, a right foot that consistently cramps, it's very likely that there's gonna be one section of your spine, possibly on the right, even on the left, depending on the person again, which has become overloaded and dysfunctional, and it's causing the nerves that supply those tissues to overfire and contract aggressively, causing a muscle cramp. And we can figure this out in real time. So if you're someone who's come to this video whether you're currently having sort of some low grade sort of flicking or some really subtle cramping or whether you're just lying in bed at night and you get these massive cramps in your foot, um, whether you're someone who swims a lot and you, you feel those feet cramp as well, do this exercise, then reassess how it feels in those moments. And if you've hit the right spots, you should see an immediate downturn in how severe that feels. So if you're someone who swims and you go after this low back dysfunction, you deserve to feel like those very specific cramping areas stop. And in my experience, they should if you do this really simple exercise. So hold me to it. Let me know in the comments below. Give this a go. Let me know how you felt and how it went um, because I really want to make sure that we can sort of coach you through this experience so that you don't have to have that anymore. So let me know in the comments below how you go. Basically, all it is is you want to get the ball and we want to start at the base of your spine. So where the bump is right in the middle, um, you want to start there and then you want to let it roll off to one side. So not all the way out to the side. Just start with the bump in the middle, which is your spinous process, and then let the ball just roll off onto the fleshy part. And all we're going to get you to do is we're going to get you to lie down on top of the ball. So again, you can use a lacrosse ball, which this is. You can use a tennis ball if you want to as well. So all we want to do here is just gently move the ball around until you feel you hit something that feels a little tight, stiff, or tender. Now, as we say in these videos all the time, we definitely want to respect tenderness and pain. But when we're doing an exercise that is looking to mobilize things, we actually care more about what feels stiff, tight and restricted. So, for example, for me, um, this left hand side, uh, I can feel an area of tightness right up next to the spine through one of the joints in my back. It's not tender at all. If I come across to the other side, it actually feels a fraction more tender. And with a lot of current thinking, that would suggest that we need to spend more time on the right-hand side. But in actual fact, we actually want to de-rust and de-stiffen the stiff section. So even if my right foot was the foot that was cramping, but I feel like the left-hand side of my spine is stiffer, I actually want to go after the stiffness on the left-hand side with the ball. And all that is basically is just letting the ball consistently press in, allowing those tissues to creep and to give and to de-stiffen and tighten. And, and sort of restore some normality to those tissues. So again, depending on who you are and how you feel here, for me, this doesn't feel very tender. So I feel comfortable lifting my legs up to put some more pressure, some more body weight pressure through that part of the ball, that part of my spine. And again, this feels relatively comfortable. Now, if you have any tenderness here, this might be a little bit too much for you. So you can put a foot down if it's a little bit too much, or you can stay in this position if it feels better for you. You can also come up a little bit more onto your elbows if you feel like that helps but ultimately you want to find a position and a variation on this stretch that's uh, that allows you access to these cyst spots uh, without it being overbearing so if it's really tender then make sure you feel very comfortable here or find a variation that's comfortable 
once you spend a, a minute or two here or as long as you feel you need to that you feel like this has started to give a little bit then all you need to do is just move the ball down a fraction or up a fraction depending on where you feel the next area of stiffness and tightness is and then just repeat the process so so for a small percentage of people um, if you do get some foot cramping wherever it tends or whichever side it tends to be you may feel something start to happen when you when you're on the relevant section of your spine so as this is freeing up you might start to feel some sort of flicking or some ticking in your foot um, that's okay that tells you that you're on the spot that's important again not everyone gets that but the point is we want to stay on these spots until they free up and then you want to go and do the thing or get into the position that generally gives you those foot muscle cramps to gauge what changes and i think you'll find that as these sections of your back free up we're freeing up the nerve we're allowing the nerve to express itself more normally from a mechanical perspective in terms of the nerve sort of flossing a lot better but also from a neural perspective where you're not necessarily compromising any of the signals that are going down that nerve to the foot um, we can restore some normality to the spine here which then transfers down to the foot which tends to cause those muscle cramps so so again just to reiterate if you're having foot muscle cramps you can take a ball to the lower reaches of your back and then segmentally come up as high as you feel comfortable until you stop finding things that are interesting and relatable to what you're going through. And then what you should find is if you can free that up enough, again, regardless of which side it is, because remember, as we've spoken about in previous videos, your body doesn't necessarily associate you as a right side and a left side. It associates you as a body, as a whole. So again, mechanically, if your left foot is the foot that's cramping, but this right side's really stiff, it can often sound a bit confusing because they present as different sides. However, if I have a restriction on this right-hand side of my back, it pulls slack from the top, it pulls slack from the diagonal, it pulls slack from the other side, it pulls slack from everywhere around that. So essentially we wanna respect where your symptoms are. So you can go after the left foot with the ball, you can get into those tissues and really try and free them up as much as you can. But if you're also not having a conversation with your lower back to find where the root cause of that foot muscle cramping is, then it's almost impossible to solve it long term, or at least expect it to have, uh, you know, to make that progress, uh, that meaningful progress over time. So, so hopefully that was really interesting. Um, the the last thing I want to touch on, just just to tie all this in together, is what we always like to do in these videos is to make sure that there's no mystery surrounding the cause of things. So. Again, we've sort of hopefully highlighted that by suggesting that a lot of foot muscle cramping is connected to low back dysfunction. Subtle, covert, it's nothing painful, it's nothing overtly obvious, but it's there when you go looking for it. But we also need to tell you why that section of your back has become a problem. So if you're finding that the right-hand side of your spine is stiff, but the left-hand side is not too bad, and the, the lower section of your lower back is stiff, but when you come up a little bit higher, it doesn't feel as stiff, there has to be a genuine reason for why that section has become stiff. And for a lot of people, at least from what I see clinically, the number one most common cause of any low back dysfunction that will often categorize why you tend to be dysfunctional in whatever area you might be, it essentially comes back to one simple thing, and that's the, the everyday sitting shapes that you get into. So that can be sitting on the couch, that can be sitting in the car, can be sitting down to eat breakfast, sitting down to read a book, sitting at the computer, using a laptop, you know, sitting at a mate's place having a beer, you can be watching some TV, um, you can be you know, playing games, you can be on your phone, you can be sitting up in bed at the end of the night um, doing something. But the, the catch is, the thing that marries all these concepts together is wherever uh, your stiff dysfunctional section is, suggests that that is the section that when you relax, that is the section that you're hinging through without realizing it. So if you, if you find, for example, that your stiffness is up here like it tends to be for me, if I sort of slouch and relax, the hinge point of my spine is through here. So wherever the sharpest point of the curve is, is where the most load goes. So your body needs to adapt to that by stiffening up that area to protect it and to sort of tolerate that load long term. So it's great to keep your back from disintegrating, but if you're looking for pure function and optimal performance, you're essentially adding handbrakes to sections of your spine that can express themselves to the areas that the nerves that come from that area um, go to and associate with. So again, if you're someone who is a bit stiffer on one side than the other, that also suggests that not only are you sort of bringing in a particular section, but you might be twisting off to one side um, and biasing one side more than the other. So again, the classic one is, 
slashing or, or losing that good position on the computer and then reaching out on the mouse for hours on end. So essentially you're directing that, that overload to one section of your spine and then you're biasing one side more than the other depending on the shape that you're in. So, so it may sound really strange ultimately that your sitting habits can lead to foot muscle cramping particularly because you might be someone who experiences foot muscle cramps when you're swimming or when you're walking or even if you're just sitting in bed at night trying to sleep. But when you start to ask the right questions and you start hunting for the source of these things, we start at the foot and we ultimately work our way to the spine and then we can work our way to your everyday sitting habits or at the very least your spinal habits, the positions you put your back in throughout the day. So, so again, hopefully that was really helpful for you guys. Please let me know in the comments what this video has done for you. Um, give the back stuff a go. Let me know how it makes you feel. I've seen enough of these. Uh, I've seen enough foot muscle cramps in my lifetime so far over the last 15 years. Um, I haven't seen a person with foot muscle cramping that doesn't have their symptoms improved by some lower back dysfunction. Again, it doesn't guarantee that it will for you, but it does give you a really strong platform to go hunting from. Take that information to your physical therapist or your physiotherapist. Get them to look at, look at it on your behalf. Or you can also go hunting with the ball, like I said. So um, again, if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like below. Consider subscribing if you're new. And then, uh, and actually too, please let me know in the comments below. Um, if you have any ideas about things that you want me to cover in a video, if you've gone through the back catalog and you know, you've, you've found a, hopefully a few useful things that'll, um, that might be specific to you, but there's a couple of things that we haven't quite got there yet um, that you would like me to talk about, whether it's a particular condition, whether it's a particular exercise, whether you have a specific issue that you want to uh, learn more about or learn some exercises to try and solve it, please let me know in the comments below and I'll produce a video on that as well. So um, again, thanks for watching. Um, hopefully that was helpful and then we'll see you in the next one.